Live from Studio 46 of the Citrix Broadcast System, it's Tech Talks To Go. I'm your host, Sean Donahue. Tech Talks To Go is a condensed conversational style series that features industry leaders and subject matter experts. The topics we cover are designed for you and by you, our viewing audience. On today's episode, we have Ron Oglesby from Unidesk. So please help me welcome to the virtual stage, Ron Oglesby. All right, welcome to the show, Ron Oglesby. Ron, thanks for being here, buddy. Oh, uh, thanks a lot. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Oh, how are you today? I'm awesome, man. The sun is shining. The coffee's hot, right? Can't beat it. <laughs> All right. Well, you're obviously not in Boston because the sun never shines and the coffee's never hot here. <laughs> Ron, I am uh, really jacked to have you on the show today because we're going to be talking about uh, an, acquisition, an acquisition Citrix made uh, by a company called Unidesk. Yeah, a little so, company called Unidesk. A little company called Unidesk, app layering. Ron, I've been in the space for a while, but I really need your help here. What is app layering? Kind of bring me through the ABCs of app layering. Sure, sure. A app layering is a is a application management tool, kind of like uh, a, a little bit of a new shift to the game when people think about traditional MSI packaging or uh, doing things via app V, et cetera. Uh, the key here is OS and app management, isolating the apps into their own unique virtual disk. Those are the containers for the apps and then being able to bring them back together either in the image or out of the image as a single functional system. The apps look, act, and behave as if they were installed in the gold image, but they're not. Okay. They're, they're streamed or connected to that desktop, and they're just accessing that, and it looks like it's installed, but it's not. Okay, so I'm used to you know, app virtualization, app delivery technologies, obviously, with uh, Zen Apps and Desktop. We're laying those applications down on a, let's say, a server, uh, server-based image uh, to access later, or with App V, we're actually streaming them down yeah. into an operating system, and then you know, uh, running them through a file system driver. But you're saying that app layering isn't really doing that. What is, yeah, how it's is a little, it doing it? Yeah, with it's a little test? different, right? It's kind of, uh, it's an interesting kind of uh, hybrid from a results perspective. From a results perspective, uh, you get apps that look like they're in the image, right? Uh, yet you can also get the real-time delivery. And this is, a, this is a great image to explain it. Layers are delivered one of two ways. Mm -hmm. uh, the first way is layered images. Right, you pick the operating system, you pick your VDA, your apps, you say go, and it actually de builds, compiles an image that's handed off out into the world to MCS, to PVS, uh, to any image provisioning system. And then the second model is what we call elastic layering or dynamic layering. As you log in, based on who you are, you connect to these additional apps. Now these additional apps, uh, are kind of that real-time delivery model, but unlike, let's say, AppV that uh, streams it down and caches it in a local cache, these are central mm -hmm. VHDs. We're mounting the VHD, blending the file system, loading the registry, and it looks like the app is installed locally, but it's actually a shared centralized disk. Okay, and every app goes into its own layer? Yeah, every app. You can, uh, you know, you can put Office or uh, electronic health record systems or the VDA or the PVS target software into their own layers. And then based on what that app does, you as the IT admin picks how it's delivered. So a great example, uh, single sign-on tools, uh, uh, things like the VDA, things that either can't be delivered hot, right, right at login, yeah. you need the VDA there when the machine boots, or single right. sign-on, which needs to be there prior to uh, the person actually signing on to their session, those you just say, select it, push it out into my image. But then you have all these other apps, all these tertiary apps, the ones that aren't Microsoft Office used by everybody in the world, something that's used by 50 people over here or 100 people over there, those you deliver real time. As the user okay. logs in, the VHD is mounted, delivered into their desktop, and it's still centralized, can still be updated, et cetera. 
And when you say VHD, the VHD is actually the layer in this case, right? Yeah, yeah. Each one of those layers is a VHD. Uh, you can actually okay. see it's a, a folder structure, a UNC path. You can go out and you can see all the layers are individual unique VHDs. Okay, so now wait a minute here. <laughs> so if I'm putting every application into its own layer, into its own VHD, I gotta get you on this one. What about the apps that actually have to like communicate with other apps? Yeah. So uh, you know, Office has to communicate with uh, Adobe or yeah, you know, or sort of, or, or Outlook plugins for for right. Yeah, yeah. Right? Those all still cross communicate, right? So unlike uh, unlike an app V, that when an application is launched, a virtual runtime is built. These yep. aren't like that at all. These apps, when they're mounted and delivered, you can actually go out to the C drive and see them in their proper folders. You can go into the registry and see them. The file associations are there. The, the, the registry, the complete registry for it's been loaded. So the app looks like it's installed locally, can natively interact with all the other apps, the operating system, whatever, but it's not. It's just a centralized app that's been mounted and delivered at login from a centralized UNC path as a VHD. Yep. Okay, but it actually looks in the, so I, I like you said with, you know, AppV, uh, you know, it showed up in the list of applications that were installed, mm -hmm. but it was never actually installed. You're telling me it goes actually, the app layering goes a step further and actually will show up or look like it shows up in the file system and the registry as yeah. a local app. Yeah, not only do you okay. see it in ad remove programs, you go out to the C drive and you browse C program files, Microsoft Office, it's all there. And if you go to the C program files common directory and it drop yeah. DLLs in there, those DLLs are there. It puts everything just like you would have installed it on the machine. That's what's actually captured in the layer. You do the install and it captures the results of that install into the layer so that when it's blended okay. back together, it looks native. I'm gonna get you. I'm All gonna right. get you on this one. You just said the DLLs laid down, et cetera, et cetera. What about DLL hell and uh, DLLs that DLL conflict hell. with one another? That's right. Uh, so DLL hell, if when you're creating the layer, uh, Unidesk or Citrix app layering in this case, uh, actually does all the normal, respects all the normal MSI install, installer rules, don't overwrite on a newer DLL with an older one, it, it still respects all that. And then on mm -hmm. top of it, the layers themselves, as they're created, have what we call layer priority. And that layer priority is, is automatic. It's, you can override it as an admin, but it's automatic. And that means that app A might be higher than app B. So if I've got a conflicting DLL, we know how to say which layer wins over the other. Okay. All right, and only that one is actually called and in use in memory. Yeah, and you know that's not to say we're isolating. We don't isolate at yep. all. Uh, yeah. I I need to run seven versions of Java with six different browsers, right? And uh, IE six on you know some newer platform. We don't isolate it. We're not doing that. We think that's still uh, the purview of like an app V. But yep. Ninety something percent of your apps don't need isolation, right? What what people wants that real time delivery. And they were going to AppV to get the real-time delivery even when apps didn't need isolation. Okay, gotcha. All right, hey, Ron, it's time for that segment of the show we call Rapid Fire. All right. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Rapid Fire, number one, what's the number one use case of Citrix app layering? Initial use case everyone sees is solving the image sprawl problem. You know, later on they see, hey, I've got other apps I can now uh, bring into the fold, but it's literally always about I have 10, 15, 20 existing images. That means I have to patch Windows 10, 15, 20 times. I have to patch Office, the VDA. Now they can patch everything once and just let app layering build the actual images. All right, because everything is separated out. Your images actually stay smaller. Your golden images stay smaller and you have fewer to manage. Mm -hmm. I was, I will admit, it's time for me to confess my sins. I was the guy out there professing the beauty of multiple images for different use cases. So app layering, Citrix app layering comes along awesome. Number one pain point. All right, uh, number two rapid fire question is, how does it actually interoperate with other app delivery technologies like ZenApp, AppV? Ah, okay. Uh, AppV can actually, you know, things like uh, AppV or even if you look at, at competitors like ThinApp, you have ThinApp packages. Uh, they can actually be dropped right into layers. ThinApp packages mm -hmm. can be dropped into layers. The AppV client can be put as a layer, right? We tend to oh, tell okay. people, 
do it with no cash so everyone starts with a yep. with a fresh zeroed out cash uh yep. but yeah interacting with these other tools uh, a lot of the, the the delivery is fairly simple right we're either handing an image off to pvs or mcs or we're delivering layers in real time but when it comes to other vert tools or whatever almost all of them can be dropped into layers all right the, no, the number one rapid fire question that makes our marketing people cringe. Where are the bodies buried? Ah, are there any limitations that we should know about? Yeah, what doesn't work, right? So mm -hmm. uh, the, the biggest thing I tell people is it's not traditional app virtualization. There's no virtual runtime. There's no bubble around an app. We don't solve the problem that you have to run three versions of Java on three different web pages or, or you have to run two versions of Microsoft Office or three simultaneously. That's still you know, app V, app virtualization, that's their purview. That's, you know, this doesn't solve that problem. This solves gotcha. the other 95% of apps that you have in your environment. Yeah, awesome. And last rapid fire question, again, does it work with VMware or others? Yeah, it does. Um, the layered images portion of this is making an image that's generic, right? When it's first created, when you say go and it dynamically builds that image, uh, it's mm -hmm. generic. And then there's a piece of software called connectors that decides what to do with that image. So if it's going to Zen server and MCS, it makes a VHD, connects it to a VM on, MC, on, on Zen server, and it's ready to go and it's in a certain state. But if you want to yeah. run it on vSphere, it converts it to a VMDK. Uh, if you want to okay. run it on V, if you even want to run view and instant clone technology, this will make the yeah. images and hand them off. Uh, this, the dynamic layering, the elastic layering that happens at login, that all happens in Guest, in Windows. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what hypervisor, what cloud it's on, anything. Okay. So, and you just teased up the next topic, which is something that I'm going to invite you back to Tech Talks to go about, which is how does app layering help us transition to the cloud? And I'm hoping we can get a demo on that too. Yeah, we'll so. do some demos on that. That'll be fun. But for today, our back's up against the wall from cloudy Boston and sunny Texas. Uh, Ron, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I loved having you, and you're definitely coming back uh, for additional episodes. Our viewers, stay tuned for those because it is going to be, as the kids say today, off the hook. Ron, thanks for coming, buddy. I appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Thanks a lot, Sean. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on today's Tech Talks To Go. And thanks to my special guest, Ron Oglesby from the Unidesk Layering or Citrix App Layering Technologies. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Get the first updates on new episodes of Tech Talks To Go. Always read the blogs. There is a great masterclass available on YouTube covering this subject in depth. And of course, follow us on Twitter at hashtag Citrix Tech. And look for those emails about future episodes on Tech Talks To Go. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Cheers.